Hello beautiful souls and welcome to my channel Elevate where we talk about healing from toxic relationships and recovering your self-esteem. Today's topic is going to be when toxic people mess with your mind and that is going to be a big theme and something you definitely experienced if you have dated a toxic person. And by toxic person, I mean anyone who has an abusive mindset, someone who is um, toxic towards you in the way that they interact, mentally ill and not medicated, so they might be doing things to you without even knowing it, they may not even be aware, and that's part of what we'll go into. So essentially, I took some notes on this one and I want to be able to read off, because I actually, uh, recorded this an audio of this and I might be able to post that later but I wanted to try to do a video because usually I come across on video but I had these great ideas for this discussion so I, I might be referring down to my notes a little bit more today than usual um, you know part of the way that toxic people are able to control you is by messing with your head if they keep you confused then they know that you're not going to be able to function well or healthy you know part of the way that they they want to keep you the ideal situation is to keep you confused because if you're confused you can never feel secure you can never have needs you could never um, be like a full participant in the relationship because you'll be confused so you know a lot of times they'll confuse you with Jekyll and Hyde behavior one day they're nice one day they're not nice one day they text you one day they don't respond you know that kind of back and forth we all know that makes a trauma bond that makes you confused though because it's going to um, cultivate a level of cognitive dissonance and cognitive dissonance is a term that you should definitely know because it's essentially your brain is trying to put two different ideas together and make them work. And our brains are like completely great at trying to make things make sense. I am like really guilty of this. Like I have a I have such a brain that's very logical and although I'm an emotional person as well, in my emotions don't run me all the time so I am I'm very logical in that I'm trying to put pieces together I'm trying to think okay how does this work how is this person you know what is this person thinking what are they you know and when you try to analyze and you are faced with someone who is abusive towards you one day and the next day they're loving or kind that is a conflict right so that cognitive dissonance which goes on in your brain that conflict of two opposing ideas is a way that they keep you confused so they're going to keep you confused and they want to keep messing with your head because they would they feel more powerful and more in control when you are in that state you can't have um full personal power when you're so confused right like some if, if you're trying to figure this all out and every day things are changing the goalposts are changing personalities are changing actions are changing your expectations of what you expected this person let's say to be consistent at have now changed you're you're like preoccupied now with trying to figure out why this is happening so, you know, that's one way I think that toxic people try to control you and mess with your head. They act like a Jekyll and Hyde behavior, which causes the cognitive dissonance that causes you to feel more confused. And the more confused you are, the better off they feel because they know you're not going to make any, um, you're not going to possibly leave them, take away your your ego support for them, you know, your love for them because they keep coming back with the love bombing or let's say, you know, the Jekyll and Hyde thing keeps happening. And so they know keeping you in that vague and, and undetermined mindset and, and like spinning around being confused, they can control you more. And that's what they want. They want to be able to control you. They don't want you to have any needs because your needs really don't matter to them. All they want to do is be able to use you for whatever they can use you for. 
And, and that's the whole thing. They don't think about, you know, I want an equal partnership or I want an equal friendship. Like all they think about is what's in it for me? What's in it for me? You know, am I getting the ego boost? Am I getting the admiration I want? Am I getting the, the you know, am I able to sleep with this person? Am I able to get their money? Am I able to get their influence or meet people that would be influential that I want to meet for my own gains? And all that they care about at the end of the day is that. They don't care about you as a person at all. They'll pretend that they care about you as a person, but it's all, it's all fake. That's what toxic people do. They put on a fake facade, a fake front. They get you to trust them. And then they, as time goes on, you realize something's wrong. Like this person's not acting consistently caring and consistently loving towards me. This person's acting different. They're not the same person that they once were, that when I first met them, I thought they were. So, you know, it's, it's easy to kind of like spot it, but they want to keep you, um, they want to keep you confused. That's like a big thing. It's it's a it's about manipulation and and so some of them, though I'll say some of them know what they're doing and others them others don't. So you'll see that some of them actually take a pleasure in manipulating or hurting people. That's like a very. Um, they either they're either just downright vicious people or they in their mind they justify the fact that they're going to hurt you, by remembering something they think you did to hurt them and it could have been something you never did or you literally didn't even know you did that hurt them and it wasn't your intention at all but psychologically like especially people who are not mentally well they will psychologically kind of like keep the score they'll keep score um on these things they think you did that were bad and they're going to try to hurt you um, like I just had recently this, this person, um, in a situation who was holding it against me that I didn't want to introduce them and like have, like recommend them to other people to do business with. And I, and I explained to that person, it's, it was because their behavior was not cool. They were not consistent. They were flaking out. They were mentally ill and not medicated like I'm not going it, it doesn't matter who you are I'm not going to recommend someone to do business with people I do business with if that person is if I know that person is unmedicated mentally ill and acts flaky and and does inappropriate things towards me abusive and inappropriate disrespectful things towards me I'm never going to recommend that person to do business with people I do business with. That just doesn't make any sense, right? Like from a logical perspective, we can understand that. We can all agree that that makes sense. However, this person took this as like a personal attack. Like I was a terrible person for thinking this about them, but you know, they made their bed. They stonewalled me. They called me names. They didn't answer me um, and flaked out on plans and flaked out on me. So you made your bed. If you're going to act like that, I'm not doing this. And, and no one's going to make me feel bad. But, they, but that's what I'm saying is like they have this twisted mindset where they think you're bad for not liking their bad behavior. You know, it's, it's like this very twisted mindset where they literally don't take accountability and they don't want to face what they did. And so they're going to make you bad for calling them out or holding them accountable or even just having like a boundary like I had, which was I'm not going to recommend people who treat me this way to anyone else. I'm just not going to do that. So um, then there's people who just don't know that they're doing it. You know, there's people that are just like completely, it's on a completely subconscious level and they don't know that they're doing it and they just operate like with these values and these morals and these ethics that are not great. And they, they just see things, they just see the world from that perspective of, you know, what's in it for me? 
that's all I care about. Um, they don't look at, at what can I give other people? How can I be loving towards other people? They just look at it as it, it's, they look at it like in a, in a selfish way. And it could be just because of the way that they grew up, their value system, what they learned, especially from male role models. You know, that's where they get a lot, a lot of abusers get their abusive behavior from their male role models as they're growing up. Those values, those behaviors towards women are passed down a lot of the time. Um, but you, if you notice with these people, like they're making choices to be abusive or bad to you and they're making choices to mess with your head. Because if you notice that work, or in other situations, they're able to keep it together. They're, a, they're, they're not out there messing with everybody's head, right? They're just messing with your head. And so what does that say? It says that they're making a choice. The choice is to be abusive. The choice is to be toxic towards you. The choice is to treat you with disrespect, to not answer your text, to not engage and to not care about you. Um, and respect you as a human being. But with other people, they will. And so that's, to me, kind of telling that they're making a choice. That's, that's a personal, that's, that's taking agency to make a choice. And unfortunately, it's, a, it's not a great choice for us if we're in the, as a partner or the other person in the situation. But it kind of gives you an idea that they're actually choosing that. And there's, you know, there's a lot of these people on YouTube now that even like narcissists themselves who are talking about the fact that it's a choice. They're making a choice every day. And I'm going to do a video actually on choices and also mistakes. And that's a, that's a whole separate topic, but getting back to when they're messing with your mind. So, um, you know, you have to get super honest with yourself and have to really understand that this person does not see you as a human being. They don't see you as a friend. They don't see you as a lover. They don't see you as anyone with any worth because if they did, they would not treat you so disrespectfully. They would not ignore your texts. They would not, um, they would not say disrespectful things to you. They would not cancel plans. They would not, um, you know, uh, verbally abuse you perhaps they would not um, they would not blow up at you they would not get like get so angry at you they would they would not do that if they actually respected you and thought you were worthy as a human being so there's like this level of there's this lacking level of basic human decency and basic human respect that they have towards you because you've been so caring, because you've maybe you've come across with not having many boundaries at this point, and they think they're gonna take advantage of you and use you for whatever they can, and they do. You know, um, it's hard to face this because we all wanna feel valid. We all wanna feel worthwhile. We all wanna feel special. We all wanna think that we are lovable and that we are worthy of being loved and in a, in a relationship with someone who appreciates them and respects them and cares for them. And especially like if you've been really good to this person, like I know I just went through this. It's like if you've been really good to somebody and then they're treating you poorly and, you, and you're like trying what you can to just make peace and like just kind of wrap it up and like just be like kind of have everything end in a peaceful way but they refuse and they have like this animosity towards you or and and a continued disrespect and the and the person never takes accountability and you've been so good to that person but they never take accountability for what they did wrong they never take um responsibility for any of the disrespectful things they did that's so hard and i and you're going you're going to struggle with that piece it's really hard to like let go and move on when you know that this person did all these things despite you being so good to them. They did so many hurtful things, so many disrespectful things to you, and they just act like they did nothing. They didn't they act like they did nothing wrong. What, you know, because you have a, a different moral compass. 
they don't see it the way you do. You see it totally different. Then they don't they just don't see it. So it's it's like you have to understand that essentially you dodged a bullet because you don't want to be involved with people that have such low morals and have like very dodgy ethics. Yeah, a dodgy ethics is good. I like that. So it's like they have dodgy ethics and you don't want that in your life anyway. You don't want that in a friend. You don't want that in a romantic partner. It's not something desirable. You want to have somebody who's decent, who's got like a good moral code. They have integrity. Integrity is huge. Um, you know, and I think as far as them messing with your head further, you know, they're not, they're just, they're not thinking about what am I putting in and giving the other person. They're thinking about, um, just themselves. And I, and I wrote some notes here again. So it's very hard as a non-toxic person to relate to these people because we think they think about things the same way. And in fact, they don't even have an ounce of respect for us at all. They're just playing a game. They look at you like a disposable napkin or something disposable, something they can use for a period of time. And then they get rid of you. And that is like the most demoralizing moment when you have to like face that and accept it and i'm sorry if i'm being blunt because i know i can sound like very hurtful for people but it's something that you have to really face because you know you have to get real honest with yourself like the reason why toxic people are the way they are is because they're not honest with themselves i'm going to say that again the reason that toxic people are the way they are is because they are not honest with themselves they're also not honest with other people. So they're not honest with themselves and other people, but we have to be honest with ourselves. That's how we get to the level of acceptance and moving on and, and you know growing as individuals, having boundaries, getting away from codependency, et cetera. If you're, if you're not honest with yourself, then you are being a toxic person essentially because Accountability, honesty and accountability, admission of wrongdoing, that's all, you need all that to be healthy and non-toxic. But we kind of like think, oh, they must be thinking like we are, but they're not. They don't, they don't have the ability to be honest. The level of self-awareness is very low with these people. They, they might think they're self-aware, but it's like literally they're pretending they don't actually have a true self-awareness and again you know they they're willing to use you for whatever and then they're willing to move on to the next person and use that person or they're just move on to be by themselves and then eventually they'll move on to someone else you know sometimes they think the next person's going to fix them and i think that was what my ex-boyfriend thought he definitely had this idea like he had this like Disney, Disney um, kind of idea about how relationships should be. Like you should never fight, ever have any disagreement. And he didn't. He was like unrealistic in his expectations because he could not be honest to admit his own faults and solve them. And he felt like if he was with someone else, then that person would fix him. He wouldn't need to do those things. I'm sure by now he's realized that's not the case. And he's still going to be the same person with every other girl after me. But that's how they think. They think like, oh, it's someone else's fault. It's someone else can fix me. It's, it's I'm just with the wrong person. And I'm just, we're just not compatible. So there's that piece too where they're, Kind of messing with your head that they're they might be saying to you oh we're just not compatible meanwhile that's not the truth um they're going to keep blaming you because that's what they like to do they never look at themselves i mentioned they can't process shame um so they'll deflect it back to you or make you the one to blame and you know they're like hey i could just find some next person that person's going to be more compatible that person's going to make me happier, you know, um, and they just discard you like you're nothing, unfortunately. And, you know, 
it's hard because they do really try to mess with your head and they do they do uh, effectively mess with your head cuz you just never know like what what the next thing is going to be are they going to be kind are they going to be rude are they going to answer you are they not going to answer you are they going to say something um that hurts you or they're going to be loving it's so difficult because that that back and forth that that inconsistency is so damaging to your self-esteem it's damaging to your self-love the more they mess with your head, the more you question reality, the more you're feeling gaslighted and you are gaslighted. It's really, really bad in the long term to be in these situations because your mind is effectively getting scrambled. And that's how they want it because, like, again, they don't want you to have the ability to... Um, like, call them out and leave... They rather just kind of keep you, um, not placated, but in a way placated until they're done with you. And when they're done with you, that's it. You know, like I said, they'll go find someone else or they'll go on their own and they'll just convince themselves that they're fine. Of course, it's not their fault. It could never be their fault. It's always going to be your fault. You're the one who tried to hold them accountable. So you're bad. You're a bad person. That's That's how they're gonna think and and there's nothing you can do about that you actually have to get to a place um where you accept that they think you're bad and you're okay with that and that, that's really really tough because you know you're not bad you know you you tried your best you know you tried to be good to this person and meanwhile they're looking at you like you're terrible and you were not terrible to them you were probably really good to them so you can't let them change your own perception of yourself you have to have a strong sense of self because these people are like a black cloud i wrote um they're like a black cloud that you can't seem to get rid of unfortunately that's the issue because essentially they are from one person to the next to the next they hide it uh they hide it so well you know when they come into your life like they act like they're normal they act like they're loving kind and caring seem really genuine and seem really great and i and you completely fall for it you literally fall hook, line, and sinker. Um, very, you're like very naive because you you want to believe it. I mean, what like we want to we want to think the best in people. We want to trust. We want to be able to trust people, you know. And if this person seems genuine, you know, we want to believe that's true. It's only later that we find out with all the inconsistencies and the and the mind games and all the this and that and the sh the flakiness and the shady stuff. Anyway, I hope this video helped you. Please like and subscribe.